All right, I'm gonna concentrate not on um, quantitation and that, oh, I don't know, I clicked this too many times probably. Um, quantitation, but uh, really just the imaging aspect and particularly relevant to um, uh, transcatheter device therapy. And so um, we won't really talk about uh, the, the uh, recent reviews uh, that have been written on new ways of quantifying. But uh, as Maurice has shown, I think that, uh, you know, PISA has a very powerful, uh, a very strong role in, in uh, be determining which patients are actually, um, actually have severe regurgitation. So why is tricuspid valve imaging difficult? There's a number of reasons, um, but the first is that the tricuspid valve itself is just a different, different, different from the mitral. The leaflets are very, very thin. They can, you can see through them. If you go to the pathology suite, um, you can literally lift them up and see underneath. And the mitral, and they have a much greater variability than the mitral valve. So you can have three leaflets, like in panel A that I'm showing you there, or you can have four, you can have five. Uh, some pathologic studies suggest that uh, only 67% of patients actually have three definable leaflets. And so the anatomy itself is extraordinarily variable. And then when you look at imaging from the transesophageal aspect, and remember transthoracic is gonna be opposite, it's a very anterior structure, but for the transesophageal probe, the uh, tricuspid valve is far field. And that far field means that um, obviously we're dealing with resolution issues um, and having to image through the left heart. And then finally, um, because of the path of the esophagus, uh, we do, cannot image the tricuspid valve uh, on axis or coaxial with the incination beam like we can for the mitral valve. And so the plane of the tricuspid valve annulus means that we're always tilted and therefore using lateral gain resolution, which for a very thin leaflet is a, is a, is a really difficult thing. The thing that we like to uh, emphasize, however, is that we've got a lot of um, options with our transesophageal imaging, and that's probe manipulation, and there's a lot that we can withdraw, we can rotate, we have lateral flexion, we have anti-retroflexion, mechanical rotation, and we have a lot of different views. Now, only four views were advocated by this guideline. We are updating the guideline uh, within the next year um, to add the deep esophageal view, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And then we have multiple different modalities, both 2D and 3D, all of which have to be used for this very complex anatomy. And this is just an example of, of probe manipulation showing you that the esophagus is movable within the chest. Um, obviously, uh, maximal anti and left and combinations of views uh, should be done with caution, and uh, the bottom panels are uh, in the fundus of the stomach, and that's where we have the most room to manipulate the probe. Um, but that right flex and anti-flex gives you these beautiful uh, transgastric views of the tricuspid valve, which we use all the time. And it's that lateral flexion that really, really helps. This is just a, a teaching slide from the, for the mitral valve where you can see that by just using the lateral flexion wheel, you can get to the dome of the left atrium and verticalize your heart and therefore image these, uh, these mitral leaflets um, using axial resolution. But you can see in the far field, the tricuspid valve will never give you that option. And that's why, again, uh, we need to also use multi-level imaging. And so this deep esophageal um, or distal esophageal view allows us to image the tricuspid valve as it sits closer to the diaphragm and eliminates the left heart from view. This means that in patients who have left heart disease, prior uh, mechanical or bioprosthetic aortic or mitral valve, uh, you no longer have to image through that left heart and the, with the acoustic shadowing in order to see the leaflets and uh, to identify uh, various pathologies. Um, and we'll go over some of that imaging uh, in, in the next few slides. So this is example again of the low esophageal view, which is what I think we're gonna call it, um, where now you see um, a no left heart in the view at all. So now the tricuspid valve becomes closer. You can really see the leaflet uh, image very, very well. This is where you might do three-dimensional imaging is, and get uh, beautiful images of the tricuspid valve. But the other view that we found particularly helpful and again um, allows us to get closer to the tricuspid valve are the transgastric views. So this is gonna be the shallow transgastric. This is the one view where you can see on two-dimensional imaging all three leaflets at the same time. Um, and in, in addition, we use um, this short axis view in order to image the leaflet tips and the coaptation gaps, particularly when we're assessing patients for a leaflet to, uh, to uh, edge to leaflet or edge to edge repair. 
The deep transgastric views, again, because we're off axis with our imaging uh, frequently, we need to use the deep transgastrics in order to do any kind of Doppler quantification. And so we are able to get uh, the uh, essential apical views of that tricuspid valve. But I think where we've made the greatest difference is the use of three-dimensional imaging. And you can see from either mid, deep uh, esophageal or shallow and deep transgastric views that three-dimensional imaging wherever the uh, valve is imaged well uh, is going to give you a lot of information about the number of leaflets, where the leaflet folds are, where the uh, uh, actual true commissures are, and uh, the severity of the lesion and where the actual regurgitant orifice sits. And you can imagine that three-dimensional imaging has really revolutionized the way that we look at pathology in this particular beautiful article on pacemaker-related uh, tricuspid regurgitation uh, coming out of Roberto Lang's lab. Again, the use of transthoracic three-dimensional imaging to identify the location of the pacemaker. Now, the guidelines, are, our uh, American guidelines, have advocated that we orient the three-dimensional image, the ONFOS view, in the surgeon's view with the septal leaflet uh, toward the 6 o'clock uh, imaging plane. However, that's the surgeon's view, and we're not going to open up the heart. And so most of us dealing now with transcatheter devices have elected to uh, not do the extra uh, rotation required to get you into the surgeon's view, but just to leave it in what we call the cardiologist's view. Um, and this will leave the anterior leaflet at the six o'clock uh, position. The septal leaflet then becomes uh, on the right side of the screen and the posterior leaflet to the left. And this is also the equivalent of what we would see in a transgastric view. And so the cardiologist view, I think, is, is, uh, will be uh, introduced in the next iteration of the 3D guidelines. Uh, simultaneous biplane image is a, imaging is a three-dimensional function. And we have discovered that this short axis at the base, also called the RV inflow outflow view, uh, is an essential view for any, any device therapy. This view, particularly using simultaneous biplane imaging, allows us to see uh, the anterior septal commissure and the posterior septal commissure and allow us then to basically have a commissural view of the tricuspid valve and identify exactly uh, the location of uh, the regurgitant lesions. If you sweep across the valve from the lateral toward the aortic, uh, you do uh, sweep across the coaptation zone of the septal leaflet um, and therefore, um, again, uh, get a, get a beautiful uh, image of uh, where the regurgitant jets are. Now, whenever you're guiding procedures, you just have to make a decision as to which modality you're going to use. We have real uh, uh, live narrow volume, which is what I'm showing you now, live narrow volume 3D, which can be um, displayed in any number of ways. That's a triplane image on your left, and then a, just a pure um, uh, three-dimensional image on your right. I don't know if we can get it to play or not, um, but uh, the, uh, it's not going to play, sorry. Um, uh, but the bicaval view here, uh, with you just throw on the 3D, allows you to guide your devices down toward the tricuspid annular plane. And then again, the 3D and 2D imaging, um, and again, the imager needs to decide which is going to be the optimal imaging uh, plane as well as modality uh, to, uh, for whatever task is at hand. In this particular case, uh, the transgastric views allow you to see that double orifice uh, during implantation, the actual uh, orientation of the, uh, of the clip. This happens to be a tricuspid a mitral clip um, off-label use. Um, and then the three-dimensional imaging on FOS view, similar to the mitral valve, again, allows you to locate uh, the clip arms as well as uh, look at uh, the um, uh, tissue bridge and uh, quantify regurgitation. Um, and I just stop for one second to talk about quantification, which we haven't gotten into at all. Um, but when we have devices that sit in the middle of the orifice, so these leaflet to uh, edge to leaflet devices or edge to edge repair devices, uh, we will not be able to use um, all of the methods that we have in the past, including PISA, to accurately quantify uh, regurgitation. And we will be relying on three dimensional color Doppler imaging to uh, directly planimeter the vena contracta area. This is a, the newest uh, uh, software iteration of the three-dimensional probes, allows you to actually do real-time 3D MPR. And this happens to be an edge-to-edge -edge repair that used um, real-time 3D MPR to align off-axis images um, to, to better see the clip arms and uh, the insertion of the, the thin leaflets into, uh, into the clip. 
This happens to be an edge to leaflet repair, again using both deep esophageal and, tra um, and transgastric views uh, to reorient uh, the two uh, long axis views um, and uh, best image the, uh, the, the uh, grasping and clasping of, of the leaflets. But the main problem that we have with imaging uh, for the procedures really is this uh, probe and device relationship. And so uh, the, esophagus, the esophageal um, path is what it is and the path of the devices um, has to come typically from the SVC or IVC and consequently the device is between the imaging probe and uh, the tricuspid valve. So uh, for many of our cases, there's shadowing um, of the annulus in this particular case uh, for the cardio band device, uh, somewhere between anchors 12 and 16, you will uh, most commonly get uh, acoustic shadowing. And so uh, the newest development really is the use of three-dimensional intracardiac imaging, um, again with real-time multiplanar reconstruction capabilities in order to guide procedures where when uh, the transesophageal views are difficult. And obviously these views are quite limited. You can see um, uh, the image on the left has a narrower field of view, has limited 4D resolution has far field acoustic shadowing. Um, and so uh, obviously uh, the newer devices are being designed. This is the Nuvera device on the right, which gives you a full, this is an ice catheter, uh, which is also a 10 French catheter, giving you a full volume, three dimensional look um, at, the, uh, at the right heart. Um, and we'll be able to, I'm sorry, this is the, the mitral valve in a porcine model and uh, other companies are coming up also with matrix array ice catheters, uh, which will hopefully exceed the limited uh, imaging capabilities of the halo array that we currently have. In addition, uh, devices are being designed now uh, with the thought of using ice imaging intraprocedurally. And this is the integrated millipede ice images uh, where the device itself has a channel for the 10 French catheter. Um, and we can then uh, easily guide w uh, the imaging to exactly where the anchors need to be placed um, and, and uh, without the struggle of repositioning. So the bottom line is, uh, yes, imaging is difficult um, for the tricuspid valve because of anatomic constraints. Um, however, with uh, the uh, versatility of the transesophageal probe and the new ice catheters, I think that the challenges can easily be met. And those challenges obviously involve the multi-window approach uh, using uh, the deep and transgastric views as well as uh, the, the use of three-dimensional imaging, whether it's TEE or ice catheters, and then finally Finally, um, uh, to be versatile in your use of uh, all your parameters uh, throughout the imaging case. Thanks for your attention.